when you have so many setups and you're trading all day. And then at the end of the day, you don't even know what you did. You know, there's yeah. just so many setups. You can't even journal. You don't know what to, what to eliminate. There's just too much, too much going on. That, you're was, exhausted. that was 2021 for me. I was like, whew. One of the benefits of working at a firm is having a risk manager. So my question is, how do you determine what type of risk to give someone and how do you determine when to cut them off? Yeah, that's a uh, man. That's that, you know, it's a very hard question because as much as like I try to standardize it for everybody, it's kind of like a case by case basis. Um, like somebody joins brand new, like they're they're trading pretty small. They just have like a hundred few hundred dollar max risk on the day. And like the job is to just get green. And then once the PNL is going upwards, like I, I try to push it as far as possible without affecting the trade management. Mm. So if the person is risking $50 in a trade, you know, next week, let's go to 75. Ne next week, let's go to 200. And he's like, oh, 200. I don't know. Okay, let's go to like 150. Try to push it up like 10, 20%. Um, you know, each like week or so, every couple of weeks, um, if I'm pushing for him from like 2K per trade to 4K per trade, he's going to get lost. You know, he's going to be like scared, mm -hmm. stopping out too soon. So it's like, okay, you don't want to do 4K. Let's go to like 3K. Let's go to maybe 2,500, you know, something like that. So I try to like push as far as possible without, you know, kind of scaring the guy without like affecting the trade management. One thing uh, I'd like to talk about is kind of like setups. So uh, what are your setups mostly like now, if you can kind of like share anything on that? I just focus on like two things. One is like um, a fade, you know, reversion to the mean. So uh, in the last few months, it's just been a lot of like sub dollar names, yeah. uh, just running from 30 cents to 90 cents and then failing. Uh, so I've been fading a lot of those. And then there's been a lot of like, you know, a couple of like day two and day three runners. So I like that like day two gap up, push and fail or day three gap up, push and fail. I don't like like day four, day fives. Now you just like maybe it's going to be like on day nine or something. Um, but I, I like that like reversion to the mean <clears throat> type of trade. And also uh, I like the multi-day breakouts where, uh, the stock will consolidate for like a month, build a base and then get a catalyst and then get some volume and just break out. Uh, so I try to trade those uh, as, a, as a swing trade. Um, but that's like the main two things. And I, I, ha I used to have a lot more setups that I would trade when you have so many setups and you're trading all day. And then at the end of the day, you don't even know what you did, you know. There's yeah. just so many setups. You can't even journal. You don't know what to what to eliminate. There's just too much too much going on. That You're was, exhausted. That was 2021 for me. I was like, whew. Yeah. So yeah, like eliminating things, I think, is like really healthy because you can now really dial in on like the one or two setups that you have and just push the size in those. Like get like really good conviction and just get like really into that, like every little detail of that setup and just eliminate the, the bad and then just go really in on, 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 uh, on the good and, and, uh, size up in those setups. Yeah. I also saw that you were kind of doing a bit of swing trading. Um, are you still doing that or did you just cut that off completely and said like, listen, it's just like too much. Or are you still kind of like dabbling once in a while? I'm dabbling once in a while, but, uh, it hasn't been that, that setup hasn't been profitable. Like there has been like a few setups here and there, but it's not, not a setup that I take on a daily yeah. basis or even on a weekly basis. Yeah. I've taken maybe like less than 10 trades this year. Um, yeah. So 95% of my PNL came from shorting. So, yeah. Um, but in, in 2020, uh, 2021, that was like one of the craziest bull runs of all time. And I just kind of learned to buy those breakouts in that market and it worked really well. And I think I'm going to go really, really hard um, if and when we get another one of those like bull markets, yeah. I would really focus on that um, setup because you, the risk reward and the liquidity you can get is just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. For real. Do you, you think we're on Tesla and it'll double, you know, do you think we're on the cusp of another one anytime soon? 
No idea, man. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, for real. Um, <laughs> one thing that I saw too that you kind of posted about on Twitter was that you scratched out the liquidation setup. And I know that is some traders like bread and butter, you know, um, but also maybe for some traders, it was the worst setup of their life after I lag and stuff like that happened. So could you kind of talk about your process of saying like, listen, I'm scratching out a setup. I'm done with it. I'm not going to touch them anymore. Um, I think I know the answer, but just maybe for some viewers, because that's a topic that has come up a lot on the podcast, those liquidation setups, everyone seems to be after them. So I'm just kind of wondering your, your approach. Yeah, so my my process basically I tag my setups in TraderView and uh, and then I I click on that tag and I look at the stats and I yeah. see the performance of that particular tag um, and I think this year um, I take I took five of those trades and only one of them was green and um, my losses were greater than that you know each individual loss was greater than that one little win so yeah. it just like the win rate is like tiny and the risk reward doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's just like, I just don't feel any, like I don't feel I have any confidence going into the next one. Is that like kind of like, a, would you say that's like common, like as far as like setups go, like if a lot of people kind of start doing the same thing over and over and over, you have to kind of look at it different and say, okay, this is getting a little bit too overcrowded because like, I feel like that liquidation setup, like everyone was short, looking for that big liquidation move, you know? So then you get these big wicks trying to stop people out and you just get this kind of like wacky price action. So like, do you kind of take it into account saying, okay, maybe this setup is just too crowded. I'm, I'm scratching it out. I don't think about it like that. I don't think so because like, for example, we've been shorting day one stocks for years yeah. and years now. And it's, it's really crowded now, but they still fade, you know? Yeah. But this one, there's there's obviously some manipulation going on. There's something, some you know Chinese, <laughs> you know traders behind it that are just pushing it up, and they know they're going to get some liquidity if they like wipe the offers. Yeah. So I think it has some. That one is definitely crowded. Um, yeah. But I, I know it's not because people are stopping in themselves out. It's just like somebody is wiping and manipulating um, yeah. the offers there. I think that's what's going on in that one. Yeah. But I think like the more people that are trading it, I don't think it really affects the setup like all that much in, in the short run. Maybe in ten years it'll be you know completely different. But right now, I don't I don't think so. In the short run, I don't think so.